Today on Israel Hayom Insider. My Home, a new documentary by producer and director Yigal Hecht, explores the growing phenomenon of outspoken support for Israel by members of its non-Jewish minority groups, Muslims, Druze, Christians, and others. With me in the studio, Yigal Hecht. Hi, how are you? Hi, Yigal. Uh, did I get that introduction right? Yeah, the description. Much. Yeah, is there, absolutely. Is there a growing phenomenon of outspoken support? I think there is a growing support, a growing um, visible support. I think there, it, it was always there. I think calling it a phenomenon might be a little bit wrong because nobody really looked. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the main issues, one of the main problems, that it's easier to basically uh, bring bring over extremists, people who speak loudly, members of Knesset who scream loudly and talk about occupation and talk about Palestinian rights and completely forget that they were elected by minorities in Israel, Arab Israelis, to actually deal with their issues specifically. So the lines have been blurred because all you really hear are these members of Knesset. Well, while the silent majority, the people who just live their daily lives, the people who whether or not they're Zionist, I'm not too sure, but really love this country and actually understand what this country is all about, mm -hmm. considering also what goes on around them in this neighborhood of the Middle East, yeah. who really appreciate where they live, have always been there. The problem is, I don't think they've ever been given the platform. Okay. And that's really the main issue here. Okay. So, first of all, you do have one woman in the, in the movie yes. who does say she's a Zionist. Yes, right? that's true. Absolutely. Um, now, what do, you, what do you think is... Uh, is prompting these people to maybe come out more today. Um, is it what's going on around us? Is it ISIS? Is it well, uh, I do think ISIS, the Daesh, Palestinian situation? Well, I, I do think that ISIS and Daesh is a major part of this story. Mm -hmm. They're seen, specifically Christians, they're seen, and, and also other Muslims as well, and Muslims as well, they, they actually see what ISIS, what Daesh is doing to the various minorities that live within the Arab world. Yeah. Setting that aside, I also think it's getting to a point where they're sick and tired of being uh, bunched up with the whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict because a lot of them feel that they're not part of that story. They're Israeli citizens, ma the majority of them have been Israeli citizens since 1948, and basically what the international media does and what the Israeli media does is also lumped, is always lumped the story together. And I think these people are sick and tired of that. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is, one of the main issues that at least I believe that we discussed in the film is that in this country and around the world, everybody wants to discuss the whole uh, narrative, the Israeli-Palestinian narrative, in a really black and white way. Occupation or, you know, racism, terrorism and all that. While the story of many of the Arab Israelis, the minorities who live in Israel, is sort of brushed aside and nobody cares about them. And mm -hmm. I think this is motivating a lot of them to come out and say, wait, don't lump us with this story. We have a distinct identity. We have a variety of identities. Yeah. And beyond that, we have a voice, and we want to start speaking in our voice and not have the various parliamentarians who, you know, incite people and really create um, hatred and really create, um, um, well, I guess hatred is the best word to describe it, between the Jewish society that lives within the state of Israel and the other minorities that live here. Okay, but you do show, to your credit, I think, yeah. the other side also, Absolutely. There, there is a Palestinianization of yeah. some of the population, yeah. and you show the Palestinian flags in, in Arab-Israeli towns, you show the... Uh, the rhetoric that some of the fiery rhetoric of uh, the, incite, the inciting rhetoric, the rhetoric that yeah, any, promote, promoting martyrdom, promoting terrorism, promoting killing. Yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. But they do it in a very interesting way. They do it in Arabic, mm. and and what happens is they know that nobody's going to be listening. Mm. The reality is the, the, the protest that you mentioned is a protest that occurred in Sakhnin, where 20,000 people came to. 20,000 people. There was a blip, maybe a little mention of it in the Israeli media, the mainstream mm. media. What they said there could be considered incitement to kill other people. Sure. No other country would allow it. Yet the international media and the Israeli media, and one must really, I know I, I mentioned a lot, but the Israeli media plays such a crucial role here, mm. refuse to even you know, deal with it. I'll tell you another story. For example, there was a major Bedouin protest in support of Israeli soldiers in the north uh, just before Yom Ha'atzmaut. Nobody covered it. Before was, Independence Day. Before Independence Day. You know, there was a mention, I believe in Israel, there was a mention of it. Okay. The next day, there was uh, anti-Israel protest in the Negev, Palestinian flags, etc. The Israeli media, like Kurds, came mm -hmm. there and basically covered all of it. Mm -hmm. That's really the story here. The Israeli media refuses to give, to give a platform 
to the silent majority who really love this country, who believe in this country, who understand what this country is about. There is racism in this country. You can't ignore that racism exists in this country. And you show some of it in the film. Absolutely, because that's reality. But racism exists in every country. And racism exists towards minorities in every country. You know, people put Israel on this pedestal as if it's supposed to be this uh, light unto the world. I know, I know that's what we say, but right. really, in that comes every from the, from the Torah. And I know that in every democracy, racism exists. One should fight against it. One should not ignore it. But to pretend that this is what Israel is all about is just a lie. But the Israeli media pushes this narrative forward. Mm -hmm. It serves them from the left and the right, because if it's, it serves them on the left side. And it definitely serves them on the right side, because who do they bring to speak for the Arab population? The most extreme. And then everybody's happy, everybody hates each other, and the Israeli media can, you know, get more ratings. Hmm. I know it sounds silly, but there's obviously more to the story, but I do think that's a major part of the story. Well, I think one, th one thing that you really brought out in the film is that, you know, there is no one Israeli narrative, not on that's the true. Jewish side and, and not on the Arab side also. Absolutely. And, and seeing these uh, people dealing with, navigating with their their identities, the labels, it really reminds me of how American Jews or Jews in the diaspora in general um, have to deal with their own identity issues. Maybe any minority, I, I don't know. I, I think that's true. Look, I live in Canada, mm -hmm. and I know the keyboard warriors of Israel are going to say, you don't even live here, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm just going to say that. I live in Canada. Great. <laughs> have fun with that. But as a minority, you have to, you live as a minority with your own sense of identity, and yet you also have to live within the broader uh, uh, population that you live in, and you have to adapt that identity as well. Mm -hmm. To immerse yourself and to assimilate into the country that you live in is not a bad thing. It helps you on all levels. To hold on, but at the same time, you have a right to hold on to whatever your national ethos or your personal identity is. And so I have no problem with people, I, I don't think it's a major, such a big issue if uh, uh, minorities in Israel call themselves Palestinians. I honestly don't. If you want to be a Palestinian, by all means. What I do, ha I think it, it, it is worth mentioning that as long as you understand that you're living within the context of the state of Israel, a democratic state that, on paper at least, allows you all the rights that the majority, the Jewish majority have. Mm. And if that is actually in your mindset, then I think there's no, there isn't an issue about whether or not one can be, uh, one can identify themselves in whichever way they want to. Okay. And where, you have to do that when you live. Where can people see your film? So the film uh, currently is, they can't see it in Israel, which no. is a shame. And, and that was really the main reason I made it. I, I want my films to be, I want this specific film to be shown in Israel because I think it'll open the eyes of many Israelis that believe that the minorities are all those specific MKs who all, we all know who they is are. There, is there any chance that it would be, that it would be shown in, uh, in the Arab-Israeli sector. We would love that. I would love that. I would love to show the film all over. I think it will generate uh, discussion, and I think people will really, really uh, have some sort of understanding of what's actually happening here, that, you know, it's not just these individuals. It's not just the individuals that you always see that speak for the majority, that, uh, the silent majority. I'd like mm -hmm. to call them the silent majority. But uh, as the film is now coming out, it came out in April, it won an award uh, in, in Boston, and uh, it, it was shown on a documentary channel in Canada, and its European premiere is going to be on June 15th at 8 p.m. in Berlin. Mm. So I'm very excited about that. It'll be my Where first time in Berlin. The Berlin at the Berlin Jewish Film Festival as well, mm -hmm. and it's slowly starting to make its round. It's it was it just came out in April, so hopefully it'll make it to Israel. Yigal Hecht, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's an excellent film, and I really do recommend that our viewers go out and see it. Um, get to those film festivals. Make uh, you know make a point of trying to see My Home. It's really really excellent. Um, thank you also for continuing to watch us, of course, following us on Facebook and Twitter, giving us your feedback, and we will see you next time.